What's up, y'all? In this video, we are going to talk about pop rivet tools, their uses in the locksmith world, and which one, uh, which one should you buy? Uh, I bought several of them so that we could figure that out. Now, to be fair, I have bought several of them before, or been using this guy. In fact, I may have talked about this in a video before. That's the $5 kit from Harbor Freight. Right here comes with several pop rivets in the package, none of which you can really use on the daily in the locksmith world because they're just a little bit too short. So it falls on you to also get some actual rivets as well. So while I was at Harbor Freight getting this, I went over replacement for this because this one's getting kind of janky. $5, it's lasted a year and a half and a lot, a lot of rivets. So, you know, you, you just buy another one. You, you buy two and you keep one for backup. But I went ahead and bought some Harbor Freight uh, 316 rivets. Now, the rivets, 316 rivets in this kit and most guns allow you to use uh, 332nd, 8th inch, 532nd, and 316th. But in our world, we're pretty much using the 316th because it, that is the size for strike plates about. This is a 316th screw. It's, well, this is an 832 uh, 832 is the standard size for strike plates in case you weren't aware or a number eight or a number nine screw the reason why you don't use bigger screws is because of this countersink in that if you have a number 10 which is what comes after a number eight screw which is what this is it will not recess properly and the head is actually too big for it to even work with some of these strike plates. So in that world, uh, the 3 sixteenths is gonna be your closest match to an 832 screw. That's why you use 3 sixteenths more than anything else. And you can go to albanycountyfasteners.com. This is not sponsored by them, but I have bought rivets, rivets from them several times before. In fact, here was the pack that was getting low that spurred me on to order some more you can get countersunk head rivets. In case you weren't aware, the 6 4C is the shorter of the two. The 6 6C is the longer of the two. 3 16 251 by 375 grip. Now, when we're talking about grip, basically, if we're talking about the latch part of it, we will be using this on a steel or metal door where the screws are stripped out. Referring to putting a latch in and holding it in a metal door, that's the thickness we're talking about, not what we had before. So if you measure this guy, you end up with, say about 1.165. 165, I was pushing it, which is squeezing that a little bit. So about 165. And if we come in here to a typical metal steel type door, you would be doing this, boom, to, uh, to do that. So if the door is tight, you know, like I said, they go with a bigger screw, you tap that guy out and go with a bigger headed screw, unless you countersink this, which all is possible. Uh, it just makes for not a great, you know, experience there. So let's see if we can get this measured. So it, I totally can't get this in there, but I'm guessing this to be about, about 0.107, maybe a little bit thicker. So 110, 0.110. So basically 0.110, we can go measure, we can go measure this too, because we're actually using this for an example as well. We can see the minimum frame there and it is 0.120. Yeah, we go back to this grip range, 0.251 to 375.4, the thickest. We'll go to this grip range on the smaller one. We have 0.88, 0.88, 0 0.250. So, in one of the examples that I'm going to refer to here is attaching a strike plate, not on a, not one of these on an aluminum frame, but on a steel frame, which is again about the same thickness of this, is attaching a strike plate to it. Like, say you drill a deadbolt hole. And, uh, and you have, you know, you just drill your hole. I've done a lot of videos on the squeeze plate where I show squeezing the edge of the door and almost invariably there are always comments about why didn't you do the frame? 
why did you just leave a, a one inch hole there? Because A, it's a heavy steel frame and this does not do anything to the structural integrity of it. There, have, there are videos floating out there about cutting out the area, right? And then adding a bracket for major, which is actually for a latch, not for a strike plate, but just because it's the same size, that all is, is a ridiculous waste of time because basically you're, you're, you're messing with the integrity of the door to add something that has no logical purpose. You can only do this really on doors that have a decent gap that don't shift because if you do it on doors where they're shift or they're tight, what happens is the door will hit this when it tries closing and gouge out the edge of it. So most of the time you're just gonna go with the one inch hole if you have a lot of room and you're not worried about it, you know, scratching the door, then you could add this. In that case, rivets comes in handy. I know some of y'all that aren't gonna wanna stay to the end of this video are already thinking to yourself, I can't believe this dude just advocated putting a permanent rivet in on a latch. That is ridiculous. What if you wanna switch it up? You just drill the rivet out. That's how rivets work. They pop in and you drill them out. You pop more in, you can do it over and over and over and over again until you get it just right. I wouldn't recommend doing that on a customer's thing, but you, you just drill it out. We're gonna look at three different guns, rivets, tools, I keep wanting to say. Now I have done a video, I don't know if I did a video on this guy or not. The reason what I, I bought this guy to replace this guy, which, which are still sold for quarter inch only. This guy does come with adapters they both come with extra adapters so you can use this for the smaller sizes as well but quarter inch by far is my main use and the only reason i did this was to uh reduce the space however one nice thing about the two of these is one hard thing to deal with right is this stays open and that's really good because you're able to just drop a rivet while it's held open and you go up to the door and you squeeze it also, the long nose of it helps a lot. One thing I've noticed when I'm using this guy is it is a shorter nose right there, considerably shorter. They sacrifice some length there for the compactness of it. And in this part. Now, can you take that spring out? Uh, I don't see the spring offhand, but you know what that causes? You can't put a rivet in here without it being open. So that means the spring-loaded part, which really doesn't do anything but keep the handle closed for your tool kit, but you can't put it in until you open this up. So that means that you have to like hold it with your body. And there's a lot of situations in the locksmith world where you're using rivets and you don't have room. You don't have, this is not deep enough. Like it's countersunk in something and because of this is a shorter nose, it just doesn't make it ideal. Let's not to say I don't use it. There's obviously some pretty heavy use here. I'm gonna go ahead and scrap these while I'm doing this. But uh, yeah, that guy is definitely has its place. And as we will see, when you step it up from aluminum to steel rivets, nope, those are aluminum. Did we get some steel rivets in? We did. Or even stainless steel. These are stain 304 stainless steel rivets. You cannot use these handguns, these hand rivet tools with steel, stainless steel or regular steel. Interesting story though. Uh, before we go longer, we're actually gonna try the steel and then the stainless steel of that same length. Oh, I'm scared of the stainless steel now. Ah. Okay. You gonna, you gonna break? Oh my God, I can't even do it. I'm a wimp. Oh, I think I broke it. Okay. Uh. Okay. Oh my God, this, this one isn't getting it either. I better won't let go now. Great. Oh my God. And again, it may just be because we're, uh, oh my God, I think I messed this up already. 
I did. <laughs> oh, this one's messed up. We, <laughs> we broke it already trying to squeeze. <laughs> oh my God. Come on, please break for me. You're not gonna, are you? It is very difficult to squeeze them. And uh, if you glance at the back of the only one of the three, the only one that mentions that, still only eighth inch. One thing about this arrow device is it only has two sizes that you can use. Arrow is starting to color coordinate their stuff so that you can just say, okay, I need the green pack for that. And I need the yellow orange pack for that. They're not e individually, the rivets themselves, I can't, I wouldn't be surprised one day if the individual rivets were color coded too. Uh, but yeah, the interesting thing, you can only use this for eighth inch, which is pretty tiny and three sixteenths, luckily three sixteenths. And uh, don't use it on steel rivets. All right, next up, $5 one from Harbor Freight, the guy that I've used for a long time and only usually replace once every couple of years. This one's ahead of its game. It still works fine. However, it is starting to break more and more rivets, which is one of the problems when you buy cheap rivets is they tend to break halfway off and leave you with a problem that you have to deal with with pliers. Uh, so the better the tool the better, obviously, the better, or hopefully, the better chance of you not having a lot of broken rivets to deal with. So this guy and the other one, and, and again, get open. comes with some packs of rivets. So you will have a sample quantity of smaller rivets, but do we see some similarities here? Yeah. Uh, now, these are knurled. So you don't have to have a key, but funnily enough, they they still have the the chuck key part of it right there. So uh, yeah, and, and the one thing about that, look, they're conical. Look at the difference between that. I wonder if the version before they went to this style chuck was knurled as well. I'd have to like go back on the Wayback Machine. So that goes in there better like that. Uh, and uh, 3 sixteenths, is that the one we have in there? We do. A little bit harder to tell on these, but one way you can tell. See, that spring's open. That's, that's how it works. <laughs> that's how it's supposed to work. All right, let's do some riveting. Oh, well, the Quinn. The only different one. That does all four of them. What we have, uh, have the wrong one tucked up, so let's get the. Oh, what am I doing down here, Jason? I'm trying to open that. All right, all right, we want this 3 sixteenths. Oh, come on! Oh, so much for keyless chucks. Honey. All right, so squeeze it together, screw that in. And screw that down. So that's just storage, storage, storage. In case you're wondering, that's just storage. It's literally all it is. All right, let's go. Let's go try them now. All right, we are going to test the 6.4 and the 6.6 countersunk head. When I drill my uh, 3 16 hole, I kind of go in and out a little bit, kind of clean it up. Dome head, we're going to try these as well. And you, you might be saying, hey, what do you use? What do you use dome head for if you're using countersunk uh, for, uh, you know, clearance issues? What could these be used for? Well, one big thing would be attaching metal to other metal in that case. This is a pull plate uh, or a push plate. Once you put a pull plate on a door, guess what? You, you never have to take it off. If you have a pull plate, those are screwed on the inside. The plate itself... You know, you never have to take it off. That's what these are for. Uh, these might be a little long, but the grip range is, is these are, you know, four or five dollars for a pack of a hundred. You might as well just get them while you're buying the uh, rivet tools as well. So there you go. 
Uh, and those of you who are saying, oh my God, aluminum and metal uh, are going to clash with each other. Let me be the first to assure you it doesn't. I just was at a job about a month ago. I thought I took pictures, but I didn't because there was really no need for me to take pictures of the plate where I had a pull handle that broke off and I replaced the pull part of it. But guess what? When I put that on there eight, nine years ago, I riveted the plate on there and attached the pull handle as normal. There was no need to switch out the plate. It was just a replacing a broken bolt on the pull part of it. But guess what? The aluminum to metal connection was not rusty. It was gooey because it was a restaurant and that may be why it wasn't rusty, but I've gone back to a lot of jobs where I've riveted aluminum to steel. There's been no issues. So don't worry about those comments. You can make them, but it just doesn't happen really like that. It's, it's not a it's not a thing to worry about. So use your aluminum, it's fine. I mean, you can use stainless steel. That's why I have stainless steel because if I really want to do it pretty, I'm gonna use stainless steel because it matches better. So for the most part, if it's gonna be covered in restaurant goo and the door is nasty, there's no big deal putting aluminum puffer bits in. No big deal. Sure, use steel, but you can use aluminum too. Step one, peel your plastic. For the love of God, peel the plastic off. I don't wanna see that 20 years later. Step two, uh, we already drilled the holes. Step three, when you're riveting stuff, you really wanna use, you really wanna put both rivets in. Now they're gonna be, you know, kind of floopy, but what happens if you tighten that rivet down and it's off just a little bit, at that magic shit right there uh if it's off just a little bit it will uh it will not be easy to put in you'll have to drill your hole again so let's start off going from basically name brand down to the five dollar one and we're gonna pop rivet this guy now for for just to point it out this is kind of in the way. Uh, I have already somewhat damaged this guy. This can shoot out the back. So never be looking here when you're doing this or have any valuable body parts in the way because it can shoot out at high velocity. Boom. All right, so we're good there. Pretty smooth. Okay, that's that one. So what it's doing is it's crunching up. When you're squeezing it, it's pulling that little ball that way and it's crunching this up against the inside of the metal. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's a countersunk head rivets and uh, and then to, to take them off again it's it's not that hard i don't understand why people rebel against this so much if you see this it's it's a rivet you just you go right it's even got its own little pilot hole uh that's my drill nothing to it and we're gonna rivet again and you get all kinds of cool drill bit rings as well so uh here's here's what it does it's just an example of uh of it squishing over on the inside it's it sucks in and it expands and holds it still all right next up we are going to use the next cheapest one in the quinn now arrow does have a version of it or uh, i guess i should say arrow made one of these and then quinn came along <laughs> and now they have one you know how hard or it is uh so uh there is a arrow version of this that i chose not to buy because i didn't really want to spend any more money on rivet tools all right that seemed kind of stiff 
Let's make sure that's in there all right and begin our squeezing process. Push in, squeeze, push in, squeeze. That's that's about the same as it. As, uh oh, so now we have a problem. Uh, that is not going through. So sometimes this is a problem, y'all. Let's see if it'll push through on the bottom. There we go. Okay, hopefully it won't be a problem. We'll see. Squeeze, squeeze. Let all push on. And squeeze it. Shot out the back with velocity. I don't know if you saw it. it looks like this is a repeater. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, that's not ideal that it does that by any means. Okay, we're on there. Let's go ahead and drill it out for the next one. Pretty good. I like that one and the uh, and the arrow are about the same, even though they're. More rings. You know what they say, the more rings you got, the, I don't know what they say. And finally, the $5 version. My preferred tool. The tool that I use more than, uh, oh, did I not get that out? Oh, I, oh, I didn't get it all the way out. Hold on. Get out of there. No, oh, you get out of there too. There we go. Next. You can see how terribly difficult it is to, uh, to drill out rivets. All right, $5 guy from Harbor Freight. Let's give this guy a go. It's definitely like, it always, it seems a little flimsier. But the proof's in the pudding, as they say. Oh, it only to oh, and you bounced off and you hit. See, that's what you got to be careful of. Is that right there? Luckily, it doesn't really matter for this scrap. But if that's the customer's door, uh, we uh, we just marked it up a little bit. That's bad, Jason. I personally wasn't kind of paying as much of attention because I'm videoing it, and I really wasn't normally. It doesn't do this, you know. It's a little bit more firm so yeah you gotta gotta watch your bounce back there because you're putting pressure in and then when it bounces off it can come down and hit a customer's door you don't want that metal door will be a little bit different it may not hurt it as bad but uh, as you can see they're all about the same you know which one should you get yeah this didn't answer any of my questions except you showing how to well that's what the point of the video was uh again uh, oh let's try one more hold up I can do this all day long. Not that I want to. All right, let's switch over to the uh, the Harbor Freight non-countersunk style. Let's see what they do. I was kind of hoping we'd get a uh, shaft break so I could show you what I meant. Uh, but it's, I don't want that to happen because I don't want to have to deal with it. But it would make good video. Uh-oh. Ooh, bounce back. Careful. Boop. Shoo! High velocity. High velocity came out of there. And I think this explains the need for countersunk head rivets. You know, they are more expensive. You do have to order them, but these dome head rivets don't really help. That would that would scratch the door if it, it, it you don't want scratches on the door where these are sticking out. So uh, I don't want scratches on the door, period, but using dome head, it's not ideal. So one of the things that you gotta deal with when you're talking about rivets, is the rivet breaking off halfway. What happens is it'll be half in there, the shaft will break off. What you have to do is take a pair of pliers, rock it back and forth, and then take a punch. Boom, 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 because you're gonna have this little area sticking up and you're gonna need to hammer it flat and then drill it out. It's kind of a pain in the ass. I'm glad we didn't have to show it, but it does happen. That's one bad thing about rivet tools is when the rivet uh, the shaft breaks and you're only halfway done. It causes some issues, uh, but it is, it is what it is. All right, let's try a couple of these longer countersunk head rivets. Uh, they still fall within the range that we are okay with. It, it's pretty close, I will say. 
uh, and it does require more strokes. That's uh, pulls of the handles to get it to collapse in on itself, but almost always these will work as well. These are the 6C, and see again, you, you this spring loaded the wrong way, so you basically have to hold it with your body, get it in the hole, and then you can start riveting. So we're gonna, now one good thing about this guy is it has its own little collection port. So now we're on the third stroke, and the fourth stroke it broke. Gives you a lot more control. That's one good thing about it. So I do love this tool. It has its limitations for sure. See that? Boom. Got to be careful with them. So I hope that answers your questions on both what are rivets used for in the locksmith world and which gun you should buy. It really didn't answer any question as to which gun you should buy. I would definitely buy if you're going to be riveting. There are pneumatic riveters out there. There are battery. Milwaukee makes a rivet tool. It's, it's all expensive. If you just want to do random riveting or have it in case of emergency, which one should you buy? Just buy this one. I mean, for $5, you can't not, not buy that. And, and $5 plus plus a pack of those. And for push plates and pull plates, yeah. But then when you start thinking about it and you're like, hey, you do, I could have used that on a latch that was stripped out and, and I could have just pop it in and, and been done. Just like I was on a job yesterday, just like I've done numerous times. Get some countersunk head from Albany County Fasteners. They are relatively affordable. It's like $10 for a bag of, uh, of whatever, uh, 6-4C, 3 sixteenths, and the 6-6C, 3 sixteenths. They also have steel and stainless steel, but you do need the bigger tool. Let me reiterate, reiterate, don't try to pop steel or stainless steel rivets with a hand tool because they, they will break. Uh, but look at the grip range, it, uh, it came down. This grip range is 0.18 to 125. Very finite grip range. That's because they don't compress a whole lot. They only compress a little bit. That's a very narrow window of uh, grip range. So it's only, in other words, only usable in certain circumstances, which is only why I got 25. I really just wanted to check them out. I very rarely would use stainless steel, or for that matter, steel rivets. Uh, you wanna talk about corrosion, that's, that'll, that'll be bigger problem. Not the stainless steel, obviously, but the, the steel. So, uh, yeah, any questions or comments or feelings on this video, post them in the comment section. Just to keep you in suspense, we are gonna go over riv nuts or rivet nuts soon. This is an open box, 20% off of $50, $39.98. My experience uh, with riv nuts goes all the way back to the old school style of this horrid, hard contraption uh, for putting in mag locks. And that's really the, the main use for rev nuts. But there are other uses out there. It's not entirely necessary to use rev nuts for many things, but they do come in handy as well. So stay tuned for that video. Make sure you hit that thumbs up and uh, we'll catch you next time. We still don't know which one to buy, do we? Uh, I mean, if you like red, it's pretty smooth. It's a little bit cheaper. There is a red version of this. Uh, one thing about the red, though, it's only two nozzles. Blue. Eh, it's cute. It'll fit in a small spot. $5. I mean, just, just, just buy one of those. The only problem I have is now everything's kind of getting too big for the bag that I keep them in. So that's gonna go to the next video as to how to store my rivets and rivet gun tools. Should I use a Milwaukee Packout for it? Maybe, no, I probably won't.